Hello, my name is John Briston, author of Fix Your Gut and Health Coach. Welcome to the Fix Your Gut YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about the antibiotic neomycin and why Fix Your Gut does not recommend its use for SIBO with constipation. Um, first of all, neomycin is an aminoglycoside antibiotic uh, that is usually applied topically. If you ever use the antibiotic ointment neosporin, then you have used neomycin. It is one of the um, antibacterial um, antibiotics. Uh, that is in the topical uh, preparation neosporin. Aminoglycoside antibiotics are derived from the compounds produced by bacteria from the genus Streptomyces and work well against gram negative aerobic bacterial infections and archaea as well. Archaea are single cell organisms similar to bacteria, um, but they tend to be more hardy, they tend to be more antibiotic um, resistant. There's only a few antibiotics that generally work against archaea, uh, neomycin being one, another being ciprofloxin, which I do not recommend, another being flagel, which I recommend only in dire circumstances, and the final one being alinea, the antiparasitical drug, which we will get to that. Um, neomycin is rarely used orally, at least in the past, and is not used as an intravenous antibiotic because of its extreme side effect profile. Minute doses of neomycin are also used as preservative for some vaccinations, but is claimed to be safe because of the very small dosage that are in uh, said vaccinations. It's up for interpretation. So what are the side effects associated with aminoglycosides? Autotoxicity, which is uh, uh, damage to the ears. Nephrotoxicity, which is damage to the um, kidneys. Vestibular toxicity, mitochondrial toxicity. Tinnitus, which is ringing of the ears. Hearing issues and loss, balance issues, vertigo, ataxia, skin rashes, and hypersensitivity, mainly in topical preparations, but it can happen orally. Gastrointestinal upset, diarrhea, or constipation, which all of those are, are, are common with any antibiotic. Um, prolonging the effects of neuromuscular drugs and medications. And worsening symptoms of weakness in people suffering from uh, masthenia gravis. Many of the severe side effects of aminoglycosides antibiotics occur from its mechanism of action against the messenger RNA of bacteria, which also seem to cause oxidative stress within our mitochondria as well. Remember, at one time, our mitochondria may have been bacteria. Our mitochondria, uh, many of your antimicrobial agents that work against bacteria also can cause some damage to our mitochondria, depending on the agent, because like bacteria, our mitochondria have a proton pump. They have its own, it has its own DNA. And it has RNA in it as well. So if it works against, um, if an agent works against the uh, RNA or DNA or proton pump of a bacteria, or you know, archaea as well, if it works against them, uh, then in theory, it would it may possibly cause some damage to our mitochondria as well because our mitochondria are very similar in those regards. Um, aminoglycosides are especially damaged to the mitochondria of the auditory system. In the kidneys, aminoglycosides are transporting through the gram-negative bacterial cell wall, which are made out of LPSs or endotoxins, where it interferes with messenger RNA translation, inhibiting protein synthesis and leading to premature bacterial death. In addition, the mitochondrial mutations uh, 1,555A greater than G and 1494C greater than T seem to increase the chances of aminoglycosides and mitochondrial toxicity. So if you have polymorphisms, um, in, in those uh, name uh, genes, then there's a possibility uh, that you may be more sensitive to neomycin. Finally, both endotoxins released from grand negative bacterial die off and the use of uh, loop diuretic medications if while you're taking neomycin, if you take uh, loop diuretics, um, may increase uh, mitochondrial toxicity. Endotoxins have been known to cause oxidative stress and mitochondrial toxicity. So if you kill off a bunch of gram-negative bacteria and endotoxins spill anywhere and they leak out of your, uh, your gut into your bloodstream, it can cause um, kind of like acute minor endotoxemia, which is also known as a Herxheimer reaction, um, and which is pretty much just mitochondrial stress and cellular stress. Um, but loop diuretics while taking new mice and could you know, also lead to kidney damage or further mitochondrial issues. Because when you take loop diuretics, you usually have a reduction of electrolytes and fluid, uh, which is known to cause mitochondrial stress in its own right. Combining that with neomycin, it's just you know too many things that can cause mitochondrial issues. Uh, neomycin is believed not to be absorbed orally, which is why it's recommended in people with SIBO with constipation. However, there are case reports um, that were done uh, while it was uh, taken orally for safety studies during between the 1960s and 1980s before. I had, the thing is, is neomycin wasn't really used after the 1980s because of prepared, uh, toxic toxicity issues even orally. They even knew it back then. If you look at the case literature, 
There are studies of people getting um, ototoxicity issues, people getting tinnitus and hearing loss issues um, from um, oral neomycin, that it does cross the gastrointestinal tract and does get into the, into, into the bloodstream. Um, there's even a, a 1983 uh, case report and study that mentions that ototoxicity is more common in people with gastrointestinal inflammation. Um, ototoxicity is viewed as an uncommon, a common complication of oral neomycin, most likely to occur in patients with renal failure or gastrointestinal inflammation. I'm guessing renal failure because they're more likely to hold on to higher concentrations of the antibiotic in their blood, in their bloodstream, and within their body. And gastrointestinal inflammation means if you have leaky gut, let's say you suffer from celiac disease, you're suffering from bacterial dysbiosis, your gut junctions aren't as tight as they should be. That neomycin is going to cross that gun junction. It's going to get into the bloodstream, and when it does that, it's going to systemically circulate through your, your entire body. And that's why it's more likely to cause hearing issues and mitochondrial issues of uh, the kidneys. You know, ototoxicity, which is hearing damage, hearing issues, uh, ear toxicity, um, and nephrotoxicity, the kidney toxicity. It's able to cause both. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, there's only a handful of medications uh, that work for uh, archaea. An archaea caused methane dominant SIBO, um, which is SIBO with constipation. Um, if anybody knows of any other antibiotics made that are mainly used besides uh, Flagwell, Ciprofloxin, Neomycin, or Alinea, which is more of an antiparasitical, but it's used as well, let me know. Uh, send me an email at john at fix, uh, fixyourgut.com with any studies or any information you may have. I'm always looking for other uh, mainstream uh, antimicrobial agents. Um, that that, that are, will work for archaea. Um, I generally don't recommend the use of neomycin. Um, I would actually say that it probably from, from dangerous to, to least harm would go um, ciprofloxin being the highest. It's most likely to cause issues. Uh, a neomycin being slightly above flagwell, just ever so slightly. Both have been known to cause mitochondrial toxicity. And alinea being uh, the safest, but though, you know, some people can have issues with alinea. I usually recommend the only medication that you talk to your doctor about when tackling methane uh, SIBO if you're not going to use any natural protocol is Alinea. I don't recommend, again, the use of Neomycin. I don't recommend the use of Flagwell unless absolutely necessary. And I don't recommend the use of Ciprofloxin. Um, however, if you do decide to take an aminoglycoside and you have to take it for some reason or you have to take Neomycin for some reason, then I recommend doing your best to try to protect your mitochondria. Um, and I have an amino glycoside protection protocol um, on my website and my blog. I'll link it. But some of the things you can do is supplement with glutathione as long as you don't have any mercury amalgams, which are silver fillings in your mouth, or your mercury toxic. If you do or if you think you do, do not supplement with glutathione. It will improperly chelate mercury per um, the Dr. Andrew Cutler's research. Um, but if you don't, then you can supplement with glutathione away from the neomycin, you know, hours away from that may help, that may help uh, protect your body and, and increase your body's ability to, to reduce the oxidative, mitochondrial oxidative stress that this um, antibiotic causes, um, as well as detoxify it. Um, other things you can do is proper magnesium supplementation, which will help uh, improve mitochondrial output and reduce mitochondrial oxidative stress. Consume clean water, uh, get proper sunlight, which also getting exposed to proper sunlight will help close those gut junctions uh, when, you're, when you're exposed to sunlight. Uh, properly, you don't want to get sunburned, uh, but getting, you know, your daily sun will help with that. It'll help prevent it against leaky gut. Uh, and just omega-3 fatty acids, whether through diet or supplementation. And getting proper sleep and sleep hygiene. Those are all very important for mitochondrial function. Maybe supplementing with Jaro, Ubiquinol, and PQQ, one or two soft gels a day. Of course, run that by your medical professional. Uh, glutathione as well, run that by your medical professional. And follow a healthy diet. You don't eat a lot of McDonald's during this time period. You know, try to follow a diet more like the perfect health diet. Uh, but those are my recommendations. I do not recommend neomycin as used for SIBO with constipation. Instead, I um, suggest you talk to your medical uh, professional about using the antiparasitical drug Alinea, who has clinical effect efficacy against um, archaea and SIBO with constipation. Um, of course, you know, contact me um, if you need health coaching, if you're dealing with SIBO with constipation or SIBO with C. I've coached many clients with SIBO C. Um, as always, uh, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, I hope you found it informative, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.